The following interview was conducted with Marilyn Yoder for the Purdue University Libraries. It took place on August 20th, 2014 at the Humanities, Social Science, and Education Library in the Swain Conference Room. The interviewer is Renee Gorder. Well, thank you for agreeing to meet with me. So, um, when and where did you grow up? I grew up in Lafayette, Indiana. You did? Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. And so, what was the community in which you were raised? That'd be Lafayette. What mm -hmm. was that like, just growing up? I grew up on a farm east of Lafayette, um, went to uh, Elston grade school, and then um, the township did not have a high school, so they paid our tuition into Lafayette Jeff High School. And out of high school, then I came to work at Purdue. Okay. Yeah. So was Purdue your first job? Yes. All right. Yes, and we, and we never had summer jobs because we worked on the farm. We had a big garden, a third of an acre. And so we kept busy doing chores and working in the garden. So that was a good a good upbringing, actually. Yeah. Yeah. We learned a good work ethic. Yeah. So then, why why Purdue? What brought you to Purdue? It's just one place that I applied that I thought would be interesting, and and uh, I was hired. <laughs> <laughs> well, can you tell us a little bit about the different jobs that you've had? Sure. At Purdue. Sure. I started uh, at H1, men's residence H1, which is now Owen Hall. I started as a clerk typist in 1957, and then in uh, 19, and, and I worked with the secretary there, who was Lillian Wilkinson, and she married our student head waiter at the end of the year, and I helped at their wedding, and so then I took her place as secretary. The first manager was Bill Berner that I worked with, and uh, Bob Page was the assistant manager. Bill Berner was also the manager of H3, which became Wiley Hall. It was opened the next year, and so then Bob became the manager of H1. And uh, then um, in 1963, I, uh, Bob Page had uh, moved over as director of the res all the men's halls, and um, his secretary got married, and so Bob asked me to come be his secretary in the MRH administration building. And um, I worked with him until um, uh, I believe it was, uh, well, I was still working with him it, when, uh, in 1969 when the men's halls and the women's halls merged into just residence halls administration. So he was, I was still working with him, but there we, uh, we moved from where we were. Um, there was a office area between H1 and H2 um, where our office and their business office was. And when we merged, then our office moved to the Women's Residence Hall Administration Building, which eventually became uh, Jack, uh, Smalley Center, mm -hmm. named after Jack Smalley after he passed away. But he was the Vice President for Housing and Food Services, and uh, he and his secretary were in the Union Building. Mm -hmm. But they then moved over to our office, and they added a in addition to that building, and eventually after he died, like I said, it was named after him. But um, after Bob Page retired, or no, Bob moved to assistant vice president for housing food services, Ron Fruitt became our director. And then when he um, uh, became the uh, director, or the vice president for housing food services, John Sauter, then became the director of the men's halls. And then, um, I'm not sure what year that was, but shortly before I retired, then Marvis Bosher became the director. So those were the, the uh, administrators that I worked with, and all of them were great, you know. And like I said earlier, we, uh, we were talking that why change jobs, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but when, when the two uh, systems merged, the uh, we had, uh, there were four of us clerical staff in the office, in the men's halls, and there were 
three in the women's. So we all merged and we all worked together and that worked out fine. Um, uh, each person had all their duties, you know. Um, maybe I ought to talk about some of those duties, what things that we did. Yeah, um, for instance, what was a typical day like for you? For me? Mm -hmm. um, well, the first job I had as clerk typist at, at H1, one of my, that was a brand new hall. We mm -hmm. just, in fact, for the first month, I started August 1, and for the first month we were over an X, Men's Residence X, mm -hmm. which later became a women's hall, and was called Meredith Hall. Mm -hmm. But um, we worked there for a month until H1 was ready to move into, and back then classes didn't start till the middle of September. Mm -hmm. So we moved in probably first few days of September, and one of my first jobs, was the contractor had given us this big box of room keys and I, my job was to put them on the hook on the key um, tray mm -hmm. and get them all organized. Sort of yeah, but that, that was the biggest box of keys <laughs> <laughs> for a building where we have 700 guys, oh, you know, wow. so <laughs> there's a lot of keys and for all the, not just student rooms, but all mm -hmm. the other rooms in the building. What I imagine there's more than one key for each student room. Sure, right, right. There were, had to be at least two because mm -hmm. there were two guys in a room. Yeah, right, yeah. Um, let's see, then um, when I became the secretary, then I, you know, worked closer with the, the manager mm -hmm. and that sort of thing. But then when it got over to the uh, director's office, I supervised, um, of his office supervisor and the um, secretary, or yeah, back then it was still secretary, mm -hmm. <clears throat> excuse me, to the uh, director. And uh, we also had uh, in the men's halls on on the Saturday morning. We had two students who worked on Saturday. Two guys who lived in Wiley were uh, worked on the Saturday mornings. So I sort of supervised them, although I wasn't there. But um, well, uh, an interesting thing here. When we were at uh, what became uh, eventually came Wiley Annex between mm -hmm. H2 and H3. Of course, back then we wore high heels. Then there were students, guys living under the office, oh. their <laughs> student rooms, and we'd heard one time they were going to take up a collection to buy us sneakers because oh. of the <laughs> click click of our heels. <laughs> that was cute, uh, funny. But um, let's see. Oh, and the, the people in the director's office, um, then when, after we'd combined, um, it was Betty Arnsman who had been the director of the women's halls, and Bill Berner, Helen Townsend was our foods person, Ron Fruitt was our student um, programs and counseling, mm -hmm. uh, Jerry Kungel was physics facilities, and Maxine Wilson was food service development. All of those people are deceased. And I miss uh, them. Yeah. Um, let's see. I guess I already mentioned about those. Oh, I, I'm going to uh, mention the uh, the halls were renamed. H1 became Owen Hall. H2 became Tarkington. H3 became Wiley. Mm -hmm. And. Uh, the, the, the old uh, office where we used to be in, the business office, became Wiley Annex, and that area was converted to student rooms after the offices moved out, because the uh, business office always, all, also moved over to um, the residence hall administration building. H4 became McCutcheon, H5 became Harrison, H8 became Earhart, and like I'd said, uh, oh, and X, uh, was a men's hall. It became Meredith, and when they when they opened um, Tarkington and Wiley in '58, then um, X became a women's hall mm -hmm. instead of men's hall. So, and, and it was named Meredith later when they named all the halls. So, that's a history on that. Um, let's see here. I don't. 
maybe I'll see if you got questions. Well, yeah, yeah, no, I have, I have plenty of questions. So okay, yeah. as far as your, your duties, what? Oh, okay. Oh, I, I didn't say that, did I? <laughs> it fine. was. Um, you have extensive notes. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, hiring, training, coordinating, and supervising the work of the clerical staff. Uh, for, and of course, we all worked with all the administrators. Um, that was a, a five-level position, which was the highest at that time, highest level clerical position. And it eventually, and I don't remember when, but it was changed to administrative assistant mm -hmm. then. Uh, another duty that I ended up with, because I, I think I kind of brought it on myself, I ended up doing and helping do a lot of proofreading. Mm -hmm. I became, I, I kind of liked uh, English grammar and that sort of thing and so even after I retired John Sauter had the marketing person call me and say would I consider doing proofreading on a part-time basis mm -hmm. and I refused <laughs> I, I just turned him down I wouldn't say I refused yeah. but I just had other things I wanted to do and so I didn't do that but that was interesting because we did uh, some uh, uh, newsletters and things like that for instance our staff was all a lot of them were involved with ACUHO, which is the Association of College and University Housing Officers. And we did the newsletter for that organization. And Carolyn Brissy, who was Jack Smalley's secretary, and I worked on that, and, and, and I did the proofing on that. So, is but we, that a national organization? Yes, oh, wow. yes, yeah. Um, then there was um, the Big Ten Housing Officers. Mm -hmm. Our staff was involved in that. Back to Akuho, go back to Akuho. Purdue hosted that conference in 1966 before we opened H5, which became Harrison. Uh, we hosted that in that building before it ever opened to students. So that was kind of interesting yeah. <laughs> and kind of fun. Um, and the, the gals that went over to the office, some of us went over there to, to handle the check-in and so forth of the conference. And we had, they had bought gold vests for us, and mm -hmm. so we wore black skirts, white blouses, and gold vests. And I said, that's when I learned that I'm not sure I want to wear a uniform all the time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Although it was nice, you just had to make sure you had a white, clean blouse every mm -hmm. day, you know. <laughs> um, but we did other publications like um, Hallways, which was a newsletter for our resident parent, the parents of our students. And um, we had a lot of... Um, um, other kinds of things like uh, for the staff, for our, our, our staff, uh, total staff, not just administrative, but for the service workers, food mm -hmm. service workers, uh, we had a newsletter for them. Um, uh, one thing I, wa I wanted to mention that we talked about things that changed. Um, when I first started, we used manual typewriters, mm -hmm. of course. Then we went to electric typewriters, and then word processors, and then computers. Mm -hmm. And of course, with communication came email and fax machines. All those things were new, you know. Um, when we typed copies, like um, if we do a letter to somebody back before copy machines, mm -hmm. um, I guess maybe I didn't, well, no. I, we did onion skin copies mm -hmm. with carbons between them, you know. And if you did more than six, it got pretty fuzzy on the mm -hmm. six copy, yeah. you know. But, um, and then we had, for duplicating, uh, we had the old ditto machine. Yes, that you had purple a, ink, right? Purple ink, exactly, mm -hmm. yeah, right. It had a, uh, you put a, a master on a drum and it turned out purple on the mm -hmm. printing, but it was hand cranked. Then we went to the electric mimeograph machine and, uh, and of course now we got copy machines. Mm -hmm. I don't know what else they might have, but copy machines now. And then I mentioned the fax and the email for correspondence. Um, uh, let's see. One of the neat things was working with, uh, working in a brand new hall, my mm -hmm. very first job, just opening that hall, and that was fun. And then I was part of the design team for Hillenbrand, which opened in 93, but 91 we had the uh, groundbreaking and started working with the university architects and the architects from Shoulders. And uh, I attended those meetings and helped with that and took notes and so forth. 
Oh, another thing, talk about taking notes. Um, the director had a meeting of all the hall managers and the director staff every Friday, and well, usually every Friday. Mm -hmm. And so I took notes at those meetings and distributed them to everybody at the meeting. Oh, there's also a member of the business office staff at those meetings. Um, so it seems like you did a little bit of everything. Oh, I did, yeah. <laughs> I could say, what was a typical day? That's kind of hard to say, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, but, you know, in our office, uh, we processed housing applications for all the new students. The returning students were processed at each individual hall. Um, although they might not come back to that hall, mm -hmm. but they can still apply, put their application in there, and then if they want to go another hall, then we did a swap to take them to other halls or whatever. Um, the pe people who, uh, the students who applied to be on the counseling staff applications were submitted and processed at our office. Um, Of course, we had a student, each hall had their own student organization, mm -hmm. and then there was a, a Purdue Residence Hall Council. At first it was called Pendragon when it was just men's, but then it was a, a representative from each hall on Purdue Residence Hall Council. So we did correspondence or, you know, uh, typing things for them. Uh, we did menus for all the halls. We used to have a master menu, and um, so it was done in our office. Um, now that was when that was before the dining courts when each oh, hall of course. had their own each hall had their own right uh, had their own uh, food service each dining hall and that, that changes there were a lot of changes mm -hmm. in food service but we went from um, at one point we had unlimited milk oh really and I think they could only have maybe two glasses of milk was a limit and then they went to unlimited milk that was a big deal mm -hmm. and soft serve ice cream yes. was served that became that was really a popular thing and we uh, served uh, softer starts for years nutritionally we didn't mm -hmm. serve soft drinks you know but that and it's funny how that turned out it's cheaper to serve soft, soft drinks than it was milk mm -hmm. <laughs> interesting but we had soft serve ice cream and salad bars were innovative things mm -hmm. that, that they did. And then went to food courts. And Sarah Johnson just did a super job with the food courts. And she and her committee went to other schools mm -hmm. to, to see what they were doing. And uh, turned out we've got all these great food courts mm -hmm. now with unlimited everything. You can go make a waffle and put oh. soft serve ice cream on the top of it if you want. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, just really neat things. Yeah, yeah. Oh, some of the things that, as far as changes, um, you know, we had single sex halls, like all mm -hmm. the guys lived in one hall, and and then and they were all double rooms, very few singles, if any. Um, but then the newer newer halls that came on board then were uh, uh, some single halls, uh, single rooms, and uh, everybody had a roommate, in, you know, in the double rooms, pretty much. Um, but then we had a few singles in the new halls, and now we have suites mm -hmm. with a bathroom for like three or four rooms. Before in the old halls, there was one big group bathroom down the hall for the whole mm -hmm. corridor, you know. And uh, and there was one. There were no phones in the rooms back then. We had one phone booth for like ten rooms. Mm -hmm. You can imagine. I don't know how the, it did that in women's halls. I don't know how that <laughs> yeah. worked. But uh, yeah, that that was interesting. Um, and now I'm not sure they even have rooms in the phones because everybody's got cell phones. Mm -hmm. um, but back then, oh, and one, there were a few years where we had uh, overcrowding. We had more students than what we had rooms for. Mm -hmm. And so um, they were housed uh, either like at the Union Building or even one, one or two years, I think, we had some out in a local motel. Oh, really? The old family inn out on Northwestern. I think we had some students there. And then they developed temporary suites. They put a at the end of like a, a hallway, a corridor in, a, in an H hall, they put a door across the hall and like for four rooms, I think they had eight or 10 students. Anyway, they had bunk beds in there. And, mm -hmm. and uh, of course they still had to go down the hall for the bathroom. Yeah. But it's interesting when, when we had room for them to move out into a regular room, a lot of those 
guys particularly wanted to stay there because they'd made friends there. Mm -hmm. So that was kind of interesting. That was kind of neat that, the, you know, that here was something we thought was temporary. They wanted to stay there. Yeah. <laughs> so that, that was kind of fun. Um, so maybe I'll let you ask questions. Yeah. Now, I, I think. Um, so what, what are some of the things that you found most challenging and mm -hmm. most rewarding? Oh, the most challenging, I think that in later years we got into doing job evaluations and that was tough for me to, to do with the girls, you know. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know what else. That was, that's the thing I remember that I, I didn't like doing, you know, um, like tell somebody they weren't doing a good job. So, mm -hmm. Although we, I didn't have to do that very often. We had a pretty good, pretty good group. And, uh, so these so were students that would? No, these were staff, these were other these staff clerical members. staff okay. members, right, right, yeah. It didn't have many, we did have a few student employees, but not many, not in our office. Um, but we did have uh, some grad interns um, who worked with Bill Burner <coughs> mainly, <coughs> excuse me, and that's some of the guys I heard from when I retired, mm -hmm. Steve McCormick and Bill Schnackel. Bill went on to into housing at other, like in Nebraska and Ohio, I forget where he's like three different, you know, um, Eastern Illinois, what is it, Charleston, Illinois anyway, and uh, let's see who else. Uh, oh, another, this guy wasn't an intern, but one of the guys who worked for us at uh, the uh, men's director's office was Chuck Melman, and I got a nice letter from him, and that was fun. Um, let me see who some of those. Oh, I heard also from uh, Garth Cobb, who had been the manager at Fowler Courts. And, uh, says Bill. Oh, Bob Bellman. That was another guy that was a grad intern. And so those were fun guys to work with and to hear from later, you know. And they always had nice, nice things to say. Mm -hmm. so that was fun. Um, what did what did you find rewarding? Because oh, well, obviously, if well, you stayed around for forty years, that could yeah, be a lot of things right. that were rewarding. Well, the people, <clears throat> the people that I worked with, <clears throat> excuse me, the people I worked with, and, and the students. Although, you know, in the director's office, we didn't have as much contact with students as we did in the halls. <clears throat> excuse me. Um, where, you know, you didn't get to know them as closely, except the the PRHC students got and to know them better. And that was the new Hall Council. Right, right, yes, yes, yeah. That, w that was fun and re very rewarding. And, uh, and when they would come back to visit, you know, that was really fun. Um, and working with uh, John Sauter, <coughs> he, he had a lot of, <coughs> pardon me, you may want to stop that. Oh. <coughs> Just let it run. Oh, you're okay. Can't, can't get my frog got. Um, he came up with a lot of interesting things. Mm -hmm. He did a lot of, um, he was very positive. Mm -hmm. And uh, he did a lot of staff training, not necessarily him, but he arranged for staff training for the, not just director's office staff, but um, all of our staff all the way down to the, uh, and had speakers and special programs and, and uh, including service workers and food service workers and so forth. And um, we had different programs for them. There was one, I remember, there were five, <coughs> excuse me, five um, principals in this program. And we each had a little, like a business card that had all those five principals on it. That we all, you know, about how to get along with coworkers. And actually, it was, not just for work, but outside the workplace, you know, your family, your friends, and um, that was that was interesting, and uh, how you could learn use things off the job too, you know. Um, one year he was the United Way campus chair, and so he and I worked very closely on that, and uh, he and I went to visit uh, Betty Nelson mm -hmm. and her 
uh, secretary who had had it the year before us, so they passed on to us things that they had learned and that they did. Um, but he, he got student organizations involved that hadn't been before, so that was interesting. And, and he designed and came up with the idea of a previous, uh, giving anybody who contributed a poster that has a, a picture of some university building or some, mm -hmm. something on campus. And I, I think they still do that. Um, <clears throat> talk about him being positive. He took, he started a group called Positive About Purdue. Mm -hmm. And uh, they just, in the past year, I think, uh, celebrated their 25th anniversary oh, of that wow. group. It was Nancy Cross and uh, Bob Britt at Student House, was Student House, Dr. Britt was the head of the Student Health Center. And uh, uh, Nikki Williams, it is now, from the Alumni Association. She married uh, Don Williams, who was an astronaut. And uh, I don't remember what her name was before, but I remember Millard Williams now, which mm -hmm. is pretty good for me. <laughs> Usually <laughs> I remember the maiden names, you know. Um, Don Gentry. I think I'm, maybe, well, maybe that's it. But anyway, that, and, and so that was fun. In fact, uh, the secretaries all got invited one time. They'd usually have lunch somewhere mm -hmm. on campus, like one time in the 50-yard line at the stadium oh. uh, or some unusual place like that. Oh, one time I think we were up in a bearing hall on that top floor. Have you ever been up there? I actually have. And, and that's neat. I think we had lunch up there one time. And so uh, was this, can you tell me a little bit more about the... What was the, the name of it again? The positive, positive about Purdue. Positive about Purdue. Was it just staff, or was it staff? It's and just students? no. It's just staff. Okay. It's something that John started, and they've just all kept in touch since then for twenty five years. You know. And was there mm -hmm. anything that that they would do for campus? Or I don't think so. I think it was just kind of doing positive things among okay. themselves. Right. Okay. I think, yeah. Kind of like a team right. building or right. fellowshipping yes. type. Right, right, yeah. Um, and a, a fun thing that, that John did that I kind of helped with, um, he, up to this day, even since he's retired, he hosts the visiting coach for the men's basketball games. Um, we would send the coach a letter ahead of time telling him where he was going to meet him and so forth and what his duties were. And I don't think many other... Uh, schools, Big Ten schools, mm -hmm. do that. Uh, at least they didn't back then. They may now. But so he had some interesting stories to tell about that. Um, oh, he did. Um, excuse me. Um, at the hall managers meetings on, we're always on Fridays during football season. We did. He did a Friday football forecast that I'd type all the games up, mm -hmm. and everybody would indicate who they thought was going to win the game, you know. And so um, then uh, we'd um, calculate those, and uh, he gave uh, prizes, three prizes at the end of the season, first, second, and third place, and uh, of the winner for the whole season, mm -hmm. you know. And usually it was Bill Bennett, who was the manager at Fowler, or Bill Fry, who was the manager at H2 at Tarkington back then, I guess, um, who won. And one year I got a third place. Oh, I, really? I have a planter that's a Purdue football helmet that's a ceramic planter, you know. And uh, so we had a lot of fun with that. And, and the, John always had a, a staff meeting, just the director's staff. and. Uh, one of the things that maybe about once a month that we'd end the meeting was we'd talk about where we're going to go to dinner. Mm -hmm. We'd all go out to dinner one night, and, and that was fun. It included spouses, so, so that was fun. And we had, like, John and his wife, Diane, mm -hmm. and Lanny Wilson, his wife, Jane, and uh, Sarah Johnson, her right, husband, Roy, Sue Graham and her husband, Lou, uh, Tim Jeanette and his wife, Sherry, and then there was Dale Daniels, Terry Ashlock, Kathy Manwaring, and Barbara Middleton. And so that was fun to, you know, to get to know the spouses for one thing. But it was always fun, to, and we went out to dinner different places. So 
John was real good. That's sort of a team building thing, mm -hmm. you know, that John was always um, liked to do those kinds of things, you know. Did you spend yeah. the majority of your time working with him, or was it half and half? You mean among the other? Well, in, in your time at Purdue, oh. did you work for him the most? Um, uh, let's see. I'd say I probably worked with Bob Page uh, most, because from like uh, 63, and I think he retired, well, no, six, yeah, I always had to be with Bob, yeah, the most, yeah. But it was John yeah. when you retired, right? Yeah, oh. no, it's Marvis Bosher. Oh, okay. Yeah, John was uh, Vice President for Housing and Food Services oh. when I retired. Um, but Marvis hadn't been director very long, and I don't think uh, John had been uh, vice president very long either. I don't remember exactly what year that happened, but I retired in 99 at the age of 60. So I took early retirement, and uh, that's worked out quite well. Um, But I guess I probably remember the things working with John because they're more recent. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I guess that's probably normal. Um. What about, so you, I mean, you were able to see a lot of residence homes open and get started. Right. Um, How do you think that they've changed over time from the time that you first came to Purdue until 1999? Well, like I mentioned, some of the food, th food service things and the type rooms um, where it went from doubles to suites and some singles. Um, uh, and of course, I don't have food service in each hall now. Mm -hmm. That's a big change. Um, but actually, in the years that I worked, um, I got to see 10 new facilities oh, wow. built in the 41 years. So, yeah, that was. And what that involved a lot of staff moving, uh, you know, a lot of people went from assistant manager to manager or, you know. Oh, another thing I did, I forgot to mention, I did payroll. Oh, wow. For uh, all of our building, people, in, not our building, um, for our director staff uh, and the clerical staff. And um, we had one service worker who cleaned our building. And then we had two guys, um, in later years, we had two guys, when we got more halls, two guys who uh, were maintenance guys on the food equipment. They just, food equipment in all the different halls, and they were on our budget, too. And so I, I did payroll for all that. And when we hired new assistant managers or assistant food supervisors or any, any payroll change that had to be made, um, I did all the paperwork on those things, too, those, those jobs, too, so. That was pretty confidential stuff, you know, mm -hmm. so it couldn't have just anybody do yeah. it. Oh, and at budget time, when the hall managers would come over to our office and um, our, they would go through um, with the director and um, the person who was in charge of administration or whatever, um, for each um, employee, how much of raise they were going to get how they were raided and so mm -hmm. forth. And uh, I always helped with that. Um, uh, doing confidential things made me think of that. So. Um, um, the residence halls, it, it seems to me that they're a pretty popular choice for students to live in. They've always been. And I know not every university is like that. I, Where I did my undergraduate degree, it, being in the residence halls wasn't possible. You right. had to as a freshman, but why do you think that is? Why do you think that the residence halls well, for are one, so popular? Well, for one thing, you know, um, a lot of schools call them dorms. Mm -hmm. We tried not to do that. We call them residence halls because we, it was uh, to us a dorm was one big room with beds in it, like some of the frat houses mm -hmm. had back then, um, because we had uh, every hall had their own student organization, so there was opportunities for leadership. Um, there were, of course, uh, student employment jobs in the kitchen or in the office or uh, whatever, you know, things that needed to be done. Student, I think we even had some student uh, service workers uh, cleaning mm -hmm. buildings, stuff like that. Um, uh, 
there were student programs, so you know we had social activities, um, and of course intramural sports was a big deal, especially in the guys' halls. Mm -hmm. um, so. Right. Yeah. So, and I, our our student employees learned time management. Uh, there was a study done one time um, because they were employed had employment did their grades suffer and it turned out because they learned time management that the grades did not suffer I thought that was interesting mm -hmm. for our students to to have that opportunity also um, but a lot of halls a lot of schools the halls were just places to eat and sleep and our halls were more than that mm -hmm. I think that's one of the big reasons yeah Oh. What about um, like student protests or I'm thinking we, we've just been going through carry, prepping for the celebration event and we've come across things about the Noodle Olympics. Yeah. What about things like that, things that are maybe a little more controversial? How did that affect you at all? I don't think it affected me at all. Or, or even your office. Uh, uh, no. Um, if they did, I don't remember. <laughs> Maybe that's a, a thing I put out of my mind. I don't know. But you know, what was it, 1969, when they had the students sit in at mm -hmm. the Union Building? That didn't really, you know, it wasn't in our building, but um, I don't know if any of our students were involved in it, but um, I don't remember but much it, about like administratively, that. Administratively, did it affect? Were there guidelines or anything that got rolled uh, out? Or? If there were, I don't remember them. I, I don't think there were. Um, I don't know. There are some books that have been written by, see, John Norberg, did he write? Well, R.B. Stewart was the first person who set up the residence halls at Purdue, and I don't know if you've seen his book, and I don't know who wrote his book, whether it's John or, but uh, about R.B. Stewart. Um, well, that's who the center, Stewart Center is yeah. named after. Um, but he set it up so that the residence halls were a dichotomy. We, we just didn't offer housing and food service. We offered student programs and, and counseling and other things, you know, that a lot of schools maybe didn't have. Um, so that was interesting, I thought. Yeah. You know, a lot of schools didn't do that. So, um, but I don't remember I mean, of course, the the, student, the new Olympics were at Cary. That didn't yeah. really. Oh, there was one time. I don't know. I was. I, I don't think I was still at H one. There was a big snowball fight. In what did they call that? The new the something zone between Cary and H one. It was open land there. Oh, really? Before Ford was built, and they had a big snowball fight one year. <laughs> the students between the two halls. Um, I think there was a little bit of controversy about that, but I don't remember much about what how, it, what the outcome was, mm -hmm. you know, or anything. But that was when they. I I wish, not the neutral zone. I'm, they call it some kind of, kind of zone between. I I can't remember, what it was, but that was kind of something mm -hmm. interesting, different. Yeah. Never a dull moment. Right, <laughs> right, right. Yeah, and I don't know that anybody got hurt. If they did, I, I didn't know about it, or don't remember. Um, what, don't about, what about students? Do you feel like students, when you first started at Purdue, did, did they change? Do you feel like students changed at all from when you first started to when you You know, retired? by the time I retired, I didn't have that much contact with students. Um, but there definitely were changes. Um, of course, everybody was getting cell phones mm -hmm. by then, you know, um, and everybody had uh, the internet and uh, a lot of that sort of thing changed, you know. I don't remember if Facebook, I don't, don't know if, Fa I don't think Facebook existed then, but I'm not real sure. Uh, any of the social media, I'm sure, I, was coming on yeah, probably it was, it was by 99, yeah. Right, yeah. But I don't think I, I'm not sure. Um, I can't think of changes. I'm sure there were, 
Um, well, probably the way they dressed, for one thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. The, the student dress changed, obviously. Oh, that was another thing in the halls. First, the guys had to dress up, and the girls, they dressed for dinner on mm -hmm. Sunday nights. You probably heard that at Windsor, mm -hmm. from Windsor. Um, the hose and heels for the girls, and uh, shirts and ties, I think, for the guys. I hadn't thought about that till you said that. That's, yeah, that, that was different, of course. Of course, those were relaxed. And at Fowler Courts, um, Fowler House was where the office was, and they had a, a of course, the, and the food service was in Fowler House. The students had to walk out in the rain sometimes, mm -hmm. and if it was raining, they had a, a light that they had on top of Fowler House that they would turn on uh, so the students know they needed, they could wear rain gear. Or, oh, I'm not really. sure exactly what it indicated, but it was something to do with the weather. A little signal. You know, <laughs> right, a signal to the students, yeah, right. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's what they could wear. Mm -hmm. I don't know exactly. Well, you, see, you see them now, and it's pajamas at all times. Oh, <laughs> yeah, <day>. right, <laughs> right, right, yeah. It's probably especially in the morning. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, but, yeah, the dress, uh, you know, we, I don't know if they do it so much now. We went to where they, they had the baggy jeans and the whole mm -hmm. jeans with holes in the knees, and, and uh, the guys were down around their hips, you know. <laughs> Just, yeah. Uh, but, uh, yeah, the dress definitely changed over the years. I just don't remember exactly um, what they did wear, mm -hmm. you know, in different times, different uh, points of the different years. Yeah. <laughs> now, what about what about you? Did you get married and have a family, or what did? No, you I've never married. Never married. Okay. No, no. Never that lucky. <laughs> I said, I haven't really given up yet, you know. But at 75, it's getting a little, <laughs> it's getting a little uh, less likely, I guess I should say. But, um, but I have nieces and nephews, mm -hmm. and yeah. So mm -hmm. did you find it difficult to juggle work with your own personal interests, or did that kind of just? No, no, I don't think I had. Yeah, I guess. Uh, Oh, I bowled in the Purdue Women's Bowling League, um, and I was active in uh, back in this organization called Indiana Rural Youth um, and American Business Women's Association and church. I've, I've, I've been an elder and so forth at church and worked on committees there. I didn't run out of things to do even mm -hmm. since I retired. I haven't run out of things to do either. But uh, yeah, yeah, I I have heard that you are a member of the Purdue University Retirees Association. Oh and yes, quite active. right. And uh, Elizabeth Hartley is chair of our committee, mm -hmm. and uh, there are uh, see three retirees: Lanny Wilson. I think he's gonna gonna be on him. Sue Robinson and I are on the committee, and then there are some present staff members and. And we uh, do our, our plan programs, usually a luncheon or a brunch of some kind for all the employees, former mm -hmm. residence hall employees, um, all, all areas of staff. And uh, so that's been kind of fun mm -hmm. and kind of a way to keep in touch. I go back and visit the office once in a while, and there are fewer and fewer people there that I know anymore. Yeah. You know, of course, that's normal, I guess. Um, but yeah, that's been fun. And uh, oh, and you know another thing that that we used that used to happen, um, the athletic department used to ho host a media luncheon, and for the men's and women's basketball coaches, and they had it at Cary in the athletic training athletic dining room, and uh, the media was there to ask questions, and anybody could go, and so I I liked to to do that and went to some of those luncheons and. When I retired, they gave me a, a pass for a free, because we had to pay for those, you mm -hmm. know. We had, to, they gave me, I could go free for a year. Oh, nice. So I got to do it. But they don't offer those anymore now. So, but those were fun. I think mainly it was when Jean Cady was, was and Lynn Dunn were the coaches. Uh, but, but that was kind of fun. Uh, I still go to, I still have season tickets for men's and women's basketball and football. Some of the teams aren't doing quite so well, <laughs> but I'm still going. Yeah. 
So that's that's been fun. Yeah. What about yeah. some other current interests? What else do you do? Work in my yard and mow the yard and have flower garden and. Um, I don't have a vegetable garden, but a flower garden. And I do some exercises, but just at home, I, will, I have a circular floor plan in my house. Oh, that's what I was going to mention. When I bought my house in 73, mm -hmm. I quit bowling, and I was taking some classes. I ended up taking 10 hours of classes, and and I, I just didn't have time once I bought the house. There were too many things to to do still things that I was going to do when I retired that I haven't gotten done. Mm -hmm. you, know? Yeah. <laughs> you know, the joys of being a homeowner, yes. as they say, there's always something that needs to be done. I did get my kitchen and my bathrooms remodeled. And those were the big, the big yeah, things. Yeah, right, right, after I retired, got that done. Yeah, but, um, oh, let's see, I have church activities, and I have a group of friends that we go out to eat. And, um, I. I, last year, I got all of the the gals that work together in the director's office, um, the, the clerical staff, got a bunch of them together. Some of them, re a lot of them retired, and some of them are still working. And so, um, thank goodness to email, it's easy mm -hmm. to get in touch with people. And I haven't had time to do that yet this year, but I plan to hopefully do that in the next month or so. And uh, so, but that's always fun. Some of them come from out of town even, and so we had a good time last year. That was fun. And I still see some of my old rural youth friends. Mm -hmm. uh, they have an alumni reunion every two years, and then there's a small group of us that get together for a pool party, and one of the gals has a pool. Um, and so, we're, we're, in fact, we're going over there next next Friday, a week from this Friday, yeah. the 29th. So that, that kind of, you know, it keeps me busy. Yeah. Well, plus, as you get older, you'll find you go to the doctor's office a lot more. <laughs> I have a dermatologist, and I had to have this skin cancer thing taken off a couple places, and so I see the dermatologist, and I'm dealing with uh, psoriasis, which okay. is a kin skin thing that mm -hmm. I have to see the neuro or dermatologist for. And I've had a, a f uh, two or three... TIAs, which is like a mini stroke, oh, wow. and uh, thankfully I've not had any bad things come mm -hmm. out of those. I've come out of those okay, but so I see a neurologist every year, you know, and my regular doctor every mm -hmm. six months, and so <laughs> it seems like I do a lot of time. Yeah, do a well, lot I of think, medical I think appointments. You did great. I would have never guessed that you were in your. Well, sentence. yeah, thank you. I. I I've been very fortunate. Yeah, you know, good doctors have have helped me. You know, so it's been kind of scary if you sometimes. You yeah. know, but but I've been very fortunate. Yeah. Well, you spent you said forty two years at forty one and a half. Forty one and a half. Yeah. So yeah. close. So if we're rounding, we can say right. forty two. Right. Yeah. How um how did your time at Purdue impact your life? <laughs> <laughs> Probably. I've got lifetime friends. Mm -hmm. Excuse me. Oh, no, you're fine. And I enjoy the sports. Still do. It's so stupid. Oh, no. <laughs> no, you are fine. I think that's the main things, mm -hmm. the friends. I think we have any mm -hmm. tissues in here. I've, I've got I got some here. I just had one out earlier. Well, that's a that's a very common common response that lifelong friends and that Purdue's just been a great place to work work with. You know, another thing I miss you. I miss the food service. Mm -hmm. Back then, we got our lunches. Um, the administrator got ours free. Um, but after so many years, but we used to have to buy our lunches. That's another thing we did was sold employee meal mm -hmm. tickets, you know. And uh, after I retired, I had to cook more. <laughs> yeah. 
not that I mind cooking, it's just that it takes more time, you know. Mm -hmm. I, I really enjoy the lunches. And, you know, they printed a, I don't know if they still do this, they printed a cookbook and gave to the seniors who graduated mm -hmm. every year. And I've got four or five, six of those. I don't have four or five, I think I've got. I looked the other day, I've uh, got one of them out to look for a recipe that I was wanting to make for a funeral dinner at church. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, you know, but the food service was really great. You know, I, I really appreciated that. And they had some really neat recipes and I'm glad I have, you know, because mm -hmm. some really good things. In fact, uh, there's one thing that um, we all usually have at these retiree luncheons that we have for our retirees. We usually have, um, oh gosh, now what's it called? Um, <laughs> pretzel salad. I don't know if you've eaten the halls. You had that. I, it's a pretzel. I've not had the pretzel salad, on. but I've heard about it. Yeah, it, it's, it's we always favorite. have pretzel salad because it's like strawberry jello with mm -hmm. real strawberries in it on top. There are layers, like the pretzel and sugar whatever layer and then the layer of uh, I think it's a cool whip and cream cheese or something mm -hmm. and then the the gel it takes a while to make it because you have to wait for the the gel to gel you mm -hmm. know but uh, that's one of the favorite one of my favorites and we always have that at these retiree luncheons in fact we had a brunch not very long ago and I think we even had that for brunch <laughs> <laughs> so and so they know that the retirees usually request that yeah. so so we usually have that um, yeah so I think those are the main things yeah. yeah okay well I think that that's pretty much everything that okay that uh, I had is there anything else that you let, like let to me share? run through my notes real quick here I think we've covered just about everything that I had in my notes um, Well, one thing that used to take a lot of time <clears throat> in the director's office, like I said, we pr uh, processed housing applications for new students. Every student had to sign a housing agreement, and we typed those things for, what, maybe 4,000 students. And so everybody would just kind of put their regular job to one side, and and we, and somebody had to, you know, put the carbons between the copies, mm -hmm. and then we typed those. Excuse me, it took us about two weeks oh, wow. doing just that, pretty much. We so had instead to, of copies, you would type each individual letter? Each, each uh, for each student? Each student, right, oh, right. Wow. had a, an agreement for each student. Of course, now, and then before I retired, they'd gone to do computers mm -hmm. with the computer over at uh, Freehaver, you know, and it, it was like, maybe done in a few hours, you mm -hmm. know. <laughs> and, uh, but that was, that was interesting that it's nice to have those computers mm -hmm. and that, that way. I think now that I'm not even sure they have a, a piece of paper. Uh, I think it's all, probably all electronic now. I don't know, you know. Yeah, as I'm, not, I'm as, not sure either, but I would, yeah, I would right. think I, it would be safe to assume that's how oh, I know they, they, they can apply online. Mm -hmm. I know that because the girls that are working now get involved with that quite a bit. Um, I guess I mentioned proofreading, I did that. Mm -hmm. I think that's pretty much, I'll probably, I may think of other things, but I think that's pretty much right. well, thank pretty you much for it. For meeting with me and sharing your thoughts You're welcome. and experiences. It's been fun. Yeah. Yeah.